last night when I was getting ready to go to bed, I was feeling so anxious, like through the roof anxious. And I don't tend to be a super anxious person. So I was trying to figure out what was going on. And it was to the point where I was almost fearful, like I was afraid to go to sleep. And I was looking for ways to soothe myself. And I picked up this book called 101 Essays to Change the Way You Think by Brianna Weist. And I randomly opened the book to essay number 53. I haven't read the whole book, but I love to just open it up and read an essay. And I'm going to read it to you right now. I'm not going to read it from here. I'm going to read it from my screen. So I'm not looking down the whole time. I hope that you love this. So she says, Yesterday, I took a shortcut while walking home and ended up crossing through a small graveyard in the back of a city church. I stopped and I looked at the names and dates of the veterans and three-year-olds and loving wives and fathers and sisters and husbands, the immortalized bits of what their lives were summed up to be. And I thought to myself, why would a soul want a body? What can a body do that a soul can't? Why would it want an impermanent, gross, heavy, hurting thing? I was standing in front of a husband and wife, a husband and wife that died in the late 1800s. I looked at their final resting places a few inches away from one another and realized a soul can't touch. Assuming the idea that a soul is an energy field and that our spirits do indeed exceed the speck of life our bodies provide in the span of infinity, a soul can't touch. It can't see the light. It is the light. It doesn't know the need for human skin. It can't run its fingers over someone else's hand and neck and back, and it can't feel the crippling desire and ecstatic passion. Those are symptoms of a madness we call love, but it's human love. It's often shallow and wild and manic and the equivalent of smoking crack cocaine. It melts into appreciation of something deeper, or it burns brightly and then it goes out. Souls can't experience a beginning or an end nor an array and spectrum of emotions. They can't be surprised because they were never confused or unknowing. They don't know physical, emotional warmth or what it's like to hold and kiss a new baby on the forehead or the jilt you get in your chest when you smell the person you love. Your soul can't feel the cadence of reading your favorite book or the sensation when your mind puts someone else's story into your life or how your fingers flip through the broken binding for the trillionth time and that lovely book smell, especially when it's your favorite book. It doesn't know that crisp and comforting coolness of fall or the heat of sun on your back in the summer. It doesn't know that deep feeling you get when you spread your fingers out and run your hand through water. It can't wear your favorite t-shirt or eat cookie dough or sweat or breathe or cry or dance. It doesn't know the lifetime comfort of your mother or your lover wrapping their arm around you matter-of-factly. A body is responsible for the most amazing part of anything, physically finding or creating. Once we have something, we don't want it anymore. What we really want to do is to make and to fight and to become. A soul doesn't have to pay the bills or go food shopping or cook dinner or schedule a checkup or do the dishes or make plans for Friday to keep up with a relationship. It doesn't have to take hot, hot baths to relax or to organize the house or to run errands or to take walks or to think. A body can learn. A body can feel the magic of realization. It can piece the pieces together and understand. It can get lost so it can be found. It can suffer so it can heal. What if the series of rote tasks that we want our lives to be better than aren't better than us at all? What if they are what we were scheduled to do? What if there's no greater meaning than simply doing them? What if what we feel in those little moments that we want to escape and place in the context of a greater meaning is the meaning itself? If healing is just acknowledging pain, then maybe living is just acknowledging life. There are so many anxieties and frustrations and terrible things that cease instantly when we say them out loud. The point of learning to grieve and mourn and be present is only so that we can be aware. Recognition is the remedy. I'm going to say that again. Recognition is the remedy. The only thing we're really supposed to do, and the real suffering 
the inescapable kind comes from avoiding what's in front of us, from ignoring it, from acting like it's not there. It follows us and it's, it haunts us until we acknowledge it and are okay with it, even if it doesn't make us happy, even if we're anything but. A soul wants a body so it can experience things. And that body will fight itself until it makes itself aware, until it does what it was programmed to do, until it takes what it needs to take and feels what it wants to feel, no matter how dark that seems. We're not supposed to be better than our humanness. Doing so is overlooking the point of the body in the first place. We can choose happiness, but we choose the full spectrum of experience instead. Maybe instead of believing that things are linear and the road goes up and onward toward happiness, we allow ourselves what we choose. We pay bills, we do dishes, we cook dinner, and we wonder why. Maybe there's no point to feeling other than to feel it. Maybe it just persists because we pretend there's a point to feeling it. Okay, that's the end of the essay, and I hope that it resonates for you. What I invite you to do is remember in the coming days and weeks and this holiday season, which can be so filled filled with feelings we don't want to feel, is just to simply acknowledge it. And something magical happens when you just name the name of that feeling. When you say it out loud, it's like it diffuses it. What if that feeling has been chasing you and tapping you on the shoulder and trying to overtake you because it just wants you to acknowledge it? And when you acknowledge it, you allow yourself to step into a place and a sensation of peace. I am Lori Hammond. I'm a hypnotist who does weekly group hypnosis sessions that give you the breakthrough you've been desperately seeking without ever having to talk about the problem. And I'd love to have you there in one of the sessions. Look at the info wherever you're watching this video to discover how you can attend and remember to feel all the feelings. Thank you for watching.